Hi everyone, my name is Jax and welcome to my documentation showcase video. Today I'm just going to showcase the documentation that I made. It's going to, we're just going to go over what it gives you and just go through the documentation so we understand a little bit more about what I do and about the libraries that I have. Yeah. Before I begin, I do want to mention real quickly that I am partnered with a hosting company called XP Host that focuses on helping people on their technical side. So if you're not too technical, savvy their support is nice and efficient and they'll help you out and that's one of their main goals uh, some things that they provide is minecraft discord bot and bmng drive server hosting uh, they also have dedicated server host, uh, hosting but if you're interested they recommend opening a ticket and uh, the prices for minecraft and discord bot hosting are nice and cheap for example minecraft servers start at one pound and 50 pence uh, per gigabyte of ram uh, they have automatic backups every 12 hours they have fast European servers and much more. So if you guys are interested in checking them out, link will be in the description. Let's jump into the video. So right here, it's docs.jacksdanger.com. I'll put the link for this in the description as well. So this is just the welcome page. It tells you a little bit about me. It just tells you what I do. So I just basically make a bunch of tools and libraries to make development easy and efficient as possible for everyone, new or old developers. My focus areas are JavaScript or TypeScript, 5M Lua, and a little bit of framework development and tools. I also do YouTube tutorials, as you guys know, on my YouTube. And this is my YouTube content. I focus mainly on 5M coding content as it was mentioned up here youtube tutorials so this kind of breaks it down a tiny bit more um, of course i had to mention that i am working on a javascript framework series so if you guys haven't seen that please do check that out uh, this is uh, just an explanation of why i don't make custom scripts um, a lot of people have asked me in the past uh, if i make custom scripts for them and short answer is no i don't have the time or energy and i just wanted to avoid disappointing just disappointing people because so i feel like i will charge too much for the work involved i won't meet high expectations for the custom development and i won't be able to provide ongoing support for the custom scripts often needed so i've decided to focus on tools and libraries that benefit everyone, not just people who want a custom script. Coming soon will be a Tebex store. So anything that I code for myself or for everyone, like a tool, I will put on Tebex if I wanted to sell it. Obviously these listed, I'm not selling. They're just putting on my GitHub for now. Uh, if anything changes, I'll make announcements in my Discord. But the resource store will have uh, resources that I eventually want to sell. If I make a resource to sell, it will be on there. Uh, and then uh, here are my, you know, socials. So you have my YouTube, you have my GitHub, and then of course my store is coming soon. The next page is my 5M Lua library. So this is just a library written in Lua to kind of compress a bunch of 5M natives down to just a string of text and just shorten it. And so it'll be a lot quicker to type. So you're not typing a lot of natives, a lot of long natives. So it just goes over player management, vehicle events, utility classes, things like that. We can quickly fly through these. So my favorite part is, of course, the object-oriented program that comes with this. So I did make a bunch of these with meta tables, and it was super confusing. But eventually it started working. So we got, of course, this is just an example, of course, but you have an animal class, you do class create. The 5M prefix right here is not always needed because it's a, there's, it's a, you can call it globally. <coughs> so you can call the class globally without the 5M prefix. It's not really required to have, but this is kind of how you make uh, the constructor, you can do self name equals name or whatever. And these are the parameters. Everything after self is the parameters. So this is a bit more of an explanation. So we got uh, class methods. So if you make a method, you can call it with the uh, class and then the colon and the method name. And then here's both with the prefix example or with the global access example. You can make static functions. They're kind of the same as the methods. It doesn't really change too much. It kind of just do, does something like this. So animal dot create default instead of animal colon create default. Class new creates a new instance of that class. We have a animal class that you create and then you do animal new and then the name of the animal. So self name becomes generic animal. 
Uh, we have extend, so this is like inheritance. So you make one class and then you make another class and you call this one to extend it. And then you extend it to dog and then dog can use breed or whatever. So if I have animal and the method is, you know, bark and then animal extend dog, dog will be able to do the bark method. Uh, private functions are functions that you can't call outside of the class. You have to be inside the method or something with self uh, in order to call the private. A lot like how uh, TypeScript is. So you make a private method in TypeScript and you can't call it without the class or outside the class, I mean. Um, instance super is, it calls the parent class uh, constructor or method. So that way you can go down here. So self super name calls the parent constructor and then you can do super method, whatever. Here's the instance example, inheritance example. So we have dog, we have the constructor. So you call the super and then make sound, return wolf, dog get breed, self return self breed. And then down here, new dog, name is buddy, type is, or breed is golden retriever. And then you get the name, output buddy, output wolf, and output golden retriever. And here's some best practices as well, if you want to read over those. We have events. So events are a little bit shorter there. Instead of like add event handler, you do like events on. And that's kind of, you can kind of see how I uh, was inspired by JavaScript. So in JavaScript, you do kind of like the same thing. Um, you have a MIT server and a MIT client for uh, both sides of triggering events. And that's pretty much it for the events. Um, player, you have player get ID, server ID. These are client sides. Uh, position, TP, uh, set health, and then get the name. So these top ones are uh, client side. These are all client side actually. Well, except the name. The name is a little bit more of both server side and client. Everything else is definitely client. So HP, TP, p position, all that stuff. Utilities are another thing. So you can do print. And this is nice because you can put variables inside your print. So you can do something like this. You can make a variable, make another variable, and then go like that. You can also do something like this. So you can do player, the curly braces with the dollar sign, and then one and then two, and kind of index it one and two. And then from here, these variables correspond to one and two. So this will be player, player name, has, health, health, like that. So, uh, and then another one is uh, distance. This is a really good, useful one as well. You calculate the distance between two points and it'll tell you a number of how far it is away. And you put in um, two tables like this and then you put them in there. So you can put like the player position like this, player position and then target position and it'll calculate the distance between that. You can round a number in decimals. So number to round number is optional but you can number places to round so uh, how many decimals you want to have so this returns four this returns 3.14 and returns four and these are just an example uh utils server and utils client is just like the finding what side you're on so if you're running on client then you do running on client Whatever. If you're on client, then get the vehicle. But if you're on server for whatever reason, then it'll have an issue. Or you can put print uh, that it has an issue. And then here's more of a full example on how you would calculate distance because that's one of the most useful ones in here. For vehicles, it's pretty self explanatory. You get a vehicle that you're in, you spawn the vehicle, the name, the coordinates of where to spawn them. So you don't have to do file has vehicle not loaded or whatever and wait and all that stuff you just you just do it and then of course delete you can just get the vehicle and then delete it tp you can teleport the vehicle to wherever and then that's pretty much it for the library obviously i'm going to add more to it because there's a lot more to add but that is all i have so far uh, moving on to the 5m ui template i'm just going to kind of speed through this is pretty much already know about this um, I did make a video on this kind of going on a deep dive, but on the surface, it's really just um, for HTML and JavaScript. So this is kind of like how you would send data to the UI. JavaScript, what would, you, what would happen is you would have an HTML file and then you put everything in JavaScript. 
So your HTML file will be as minimal as possible, uh, have absolutely nothing in it. And then your JavaScript file would look something like this. So you would import UI manager, you would make a new class or a new class instance, and then you'd be able to call the proper, uh, the methods of that class. So create UI, your UI name, so the ID, and then your HTML code in here. You just have to remember that it's not gonna format it because it's in JavaScript. So you have to make sure that you're type checking, you're make sure that you have no typos in your code uh, for your HTML or else obviously it won't work. So then after you make this, you have uh, UI manager show and hide. So you can call, so if I wanted to show this UI, you can do show my custom UI and then it'll have the close button and it'll say welcome to my UI and all that stuff. You can create a button by uh, doing this uh, function and then doing uh, the name. So for this example, close button, and then it'll send this message to the NUI callback that you have registered on the client side or nothing if you don't want it. And then, or you would put null right here uh, if you're choose not to use uh, the NUI callback, any data that you send to the NUI callback and then the function. So everything that happens um, after that's done. So whenever it's not like a callback, it's just a, uh, it's just a function for whenever it's clicked, like a JavaScript function for when that's clicked, not a callback. Um, and then of course, if you have any stylings, if you have multiple stylings, you can load as much as you want and then you can use it up here as well. Uh, next is the Lua React boilerplate. We already know both of these pretty much, but I just want to skim through them. Basically, uh, this kind of shows you how to set it up, how to install it. This is the client Lua side. So this is like how you would send information to the UI. And then of course you can use it like this. You just gotta make sure to use type and not action because that's just how I had it set up. Other than that, I mean, everything else kind of remains the same. And then the usage for the React, in case you don't know how to use React, uh, kind of made a little bit of example here. So you import React, you return hello, uh, our header, some HTML code. And then in here you can write whatever and then call the component and so it'll have welcome to lua and react with a plate and hello from your new component so that's how you use components run npm run dev to preview the server and then of course if you're sending data to the client you're using fetch and ui so similar to the ui template fetch and ui you would uh, put in your event here and then you would put in the data and then you can use dot then to control the callback. So in the NUI callback, if I go to here, if in here, if you do callback, okay, or you do callback and like some data in here, then you can do, you can use dot then, and the response will be whatever was in that callback table. And of course the use NUI event is kind of like the opposite. So you're listening for the send NUI message. So if I do send NUI message config data, and then I pass through my config in here, then it'll say received config and then the config data that I put in. The next is the TypeScript starter pack for 5M. So this is for back end on TypeScript and front end with React. So it's kind of like both are in TypeScript. So if you want a full complete uh, TypeScript project with 5M, then this is uh, right up your alley. So it tells you what you need, how to install, the project structure. This is without React, but this is how it would look for a backend. And then type references. So this is how you would use, you would have to make sure you're, these are defined at the top, at least in one file. I've learned that you don't have to put them in every single file, but at least one file. And then you'll be able to use the 5M natives and things like that. For type safety, we got 5M native types, modern tooling. So it uses yarn, ESLint, and a prettier configuration. The hot reloads, production ready. So it obfuscates your code and JavaScript and it optimizes it for deployment. And then it has a modular structure. So it's an organized code base and it has the minimal amount of files that I could possibly generate. And then global types, if you make a, a file with a .d.ts extension, then you can add as much global types as you want. But I do have a provided file that comes with it, which is a little bit of information for like config, just to show you an example of it. 
And then if you want to contribute, you can. Uh, the license is free and open source. Um, if you want to know the differences between Lua and TypeScript, I have it all here. So we got vector types, we got entity types, we got arrays, basic, you know, how to functions. This is how you would do events. So add event handler in Lua, but on uh, TypeScript or JavaScript, you just do on or on net for cross-site events. And on is for client or server specific events. And then it just, there's more for that. So system on versus on net. So there you go. Some more Lua examples and best practices. So that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And again, be host, check them out. Link in the description. Documentation, also link in the description. My Discord will also be in the link in the description. And if you guys like or enjoyed this video, give me a like and consider subscribing because I want to make more short videos like this, not just tutorial based videos, just something like, hey, here's something new that I made. And if you guys like that kind of content and like it when I switch it up a little bit, please let me know. And other than that, that's all for this video. So you guys have a good one and peace out.